Originally designed to duel Soviet tanks during the Cold War, the Abrams has proven to be far more adaptable than its creators ever expected. Despite weighing 68 tons, the Abrams can cruise at 42 miles per hour for 275 miles. 32.25 feet long and 12 feet wide, it has a streamlined profile that helps it avoid detection. The Abrams advanced armor design makes it a highly mobile fortress. It's been such a success, almost 9,000 have been manufactured and are used by the armed services in six countries. Its main gun is built by Rheinmetall, a German defense company. Today, the Abrams 120mm cannon is one of the most accurate and lethal ever created. Through his periscope and a laser finder, the gunner has pinpoint accuracy. The 22-foot barrel has a bore evacuator to release gases. A smooth bore barrel enables it to fire rounds at a great velocity, resulting in greater penetration. Experienced gunners can hit targets 2,100 meters or 1.25 miles away. And the best have even killed tanks from two miles. The most impressive thing to me when I first found out I was going to be a, a tank commander is uh, going out there and seeing a tank fire for the first time. I mean, video just doesn't give it justice. Just the sheer power and shock and awe effect that that, that main gun has when it goes off. I mean, you know it's going to fire and it always, it'll make you jump every once in a while. I mean, you know it's coming. The Abrams comes up against a variety of targets, and its main gun has ammunition to meet each challenge. To kill tanks, the Abrams uses a Sabo round. The Sabo, French for shoe, contains a depleted uranium penetrating dart, 2.5 times denser than steel. The penetrator contains no explosives, but destroys by delivering a lethal blow racing toward its target at almost one mile per second. A well-trained loader can reload in seven seconds. In flight, the Sabo's outer casing peels away, revealing stabilizer fins that keep it on target. It hits with such force, it reduces solid steel to molten metal and ignites the interior. The 120 millimeter main gun fires three other types of rounds as well. The heat, or high explosive anti-tank round, delivers an explosive charge. The Abrams gunners use it to destroy armored and concrete targets. The MPAT, or multi-purpose anti-tank round, can be used against a variety of targets. Most commonly, an Abrams crew fires them at lightly armored vehicles and bunkers. They can also use a proximity fuse to down helicopters and low-flying planes. A canister round contains over 1,000 tungsten balls. They blast from the main gun like large shotgun pellets lethal to 500 meters. For close combat, the Abrams can bring three other major weapons to bear. One is a 7.62 millimeter air-cooled gas-operated machine gun mounted in line with the main gun. A 50 caliber is mounted outside the tank commander's hatch with 900 rounds available. The loader operates another 7.62 millimeter machine gun to provide close cover. A 
Although it has gone through improvements, the Abrams has not changed a great deal from its initial combat deployment in 1991. During World War II, more than 100,000 tanks were produced by all sides. Just before it entered the fray, the United States developed the M4, or Sherman tank. It was at the forefront of Allied offensives in Africa and Europe. But the Sherman was thinly armored and undergunned compared to its German adversaries. Throughout the war, the Germans constantly improved on their Panzer tanks, producing over 9,000 of them. They led the charge in Germany's lightning blitzkrieg attacks on Poland, France, and the Soviet Union. And in the early years of World War II, they looked unbeatable. But then the Allies designed their own heavier and deadlier tanks. Pitched battles between tanks raged from the deserts of Africa to the plains of Russia. In some fights, thousands of tanks traded blows, trying to deliver a knockout punch. The Sherman overcame its shortcomings through superior numbers and greater speed and agility. They rarely beat the heavy German tanks head to head, but they could outflank them and hit them from the side or back where they were most vulnerable. Riding his Sherman all the way from Normandy to Czechoslovakia, one tank commander earned a reputation for bold, aggressive tactics. He was Creighton Abrams, namesake of the tank that would be developed 30 years later. After the war, the US Army improved on the basic Sherman model, adding armor and larger guns. By 1960, the M60 was the best and last improvement on what was basically World War II technology. While the M60 was a modernized version of the Sherman tank, the Abrams represented a radical departure from anything before it. A few veteran tankers active today experienced the transition from M60 to Abrams. I went to tank school back in uh, 89. First trained with the M60 A1. That's the tank that uh, first tank battalion took to Gulf War I. Transition between the M1 A1 and the 60 was uh, like going from a Pinto to a Porsche overnight. Capabilities of the M1 were just uh, astonishing. The old M60 was basically 50s and 60s technology. The 60 being older technology, slower, easier to maintain, where the, the M1, 80s, 90s technology, faster, more accurate, uh, more lethal. and more crew survivability, making it a fast, poor, sexy-looking vehicle. For many tankers, the most important advance from the M60 to Abrams was the new tank's armor. No, the M60 tank was uh, homogeneous steel. There was a good chance uh, any threat vehicle may penetrate us, depending on what range the threat vehicle was. The 60, if a round hit the ammunition compartment, uh, the crew was basically dead. During the Cold War era, the M60 had to compete, at least on the drawing board, with tanks such as the Soviet T-62 and T-72. Now the battlefield has changed, and so has the adversary. The Abrams armor was developed to withstand attacks from any aggressor. Well, this actual tank here was involved in the battle in Iraq, OIF-2. And uh, these are actual some of the, uh, the battle scars it brought back. As you can see, it doesn't phase M1 Abrams too much to, uh, to go into combat and have some direct fire shot at it. They use a lot of small arms to include uh, AK-47s. They're medium machine guns like the RPK. Uh, they also have RPGs, their favorite weapon of theirs, and the IED. Um, which is an improvised explosive device, which could be anything from a mortar or uh, any other type of explosive 